Good morning and welcome to worship with Hounslow Methodist Church online. Uh, you are indeed very welcome and I hope that you find this service gives you both refreshment, nourishment and challenge. Uh, this morning we're celebrating and remembering the work of Methodist Homes, MHA, and we'll be using the words from their service um, as we meet together wherever we are at this time. First of all, we'll begin our worship with some words from Jesus. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. Burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. How awesome is the sight, our radiant King of light. Be still, for the glory of the Lord is shining. Let us pray. We gather to worship in your holy name. Open our eyes to see you in our midst and in the faces of others. Open our ears to hear your voice through scripture and music. And open our hearts to the transforming power of your Holy Spirit. Remove the barriers that would separate us from all that you have for us. Forgive our negligence of all that you have created in nature and each other. Forgive our ignorance. Soften our hearts and use us as catalysts for your healing. God of all good gifts, we thank you and praise you. You bring wisdom, ability, strength, 
and courage to our lives. Enable us to use our gifts in service to you and to others. In all that we do and in all that we are, may your name be glorified. We pray this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 27. And I am reading from the English Standard Version Bible. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. This is the end of the reading.
Most of our members are in their 80s. Most of our members um, don't have as much family support and they're just living at home alone. So our objective is really to give them connection in the community. I have a, a team of community coordinators who work with me to provide a social programme every day of the week. This is what we do on a Monday afternoon, bring young people and older people together. Because of these activities, I feel I'm full of company and that's what's making me feel happy and active. Oh, it's been great. I like working with the youngsters. I've got grandchildren of my own as well, although they live quite a way away, so I don't see them all that often. So it's, it's nice to be with the youngsters again. Yeah, I love it. We are all on our own after retiring. Children gone away, they have their own place, so we need someone like this community. I learned that old people are actually really funny and also dogs like belly scratches. <laughs> I like seeing other people's faces and I like meeting new people and also decorating and having fun. Everybody here likes to make friends and be more compassionate to other people. So it's really important for our students at Northwood College to get involved with MHA communities. It helps them build skills they wouldn't necessarily be able to build in the classroom. Things like developing that empathy, being able to communicate with people that they're not used to, not familiar with. You can learn a lot from them. It's really fun. I like meeting new people and gardening so we have more oxygen. You're all equal and together. You're all one big community. We definitely want everybody to feel welcome, irrespective of their faith, gender, sexuality, background. So we want to be inclusive. I think the more intergenerational contact that you can have, the better, and each generation can learn from the others. Thank you for all of you who give financially, for those who pray for the work, for those who support us by raising awareness and signposting people to the schemes because we know it changes people's lives. We are all part of one body of Christ and we all mutually dependent upon each other. The illustration that Paul, writing to the Corinthian, uses of the human body perfectly describes this point. Take a look at each other. Our brains can read 1000 words a minute. Our eyes can distinguish millions of different colors. 25% of our bones are in our feet. We use 200 muscles to take one step. The human body is amazing. And each part of the body has its own part to play. And yet it all works together much of the time very well. Answer these questions in your own mind. Imagine that you are a foot. What does a foot do? Does the foot do all the things and all the stuff that a hand can do? Should a foot feel bad if it can't do the things that the hand can do? What about the eye? What does an eye do? Can it do the things a ear can do? What about the nose? What if the whole body is a big nose? Would it be able to do all the things our body needs to do? We cannot tell each other that we don't need you. The ear cannot do the things that the eye can do. A foot shouldn't feel bad if it can't do what the hand does. The human body is made up of different parts, all contributing in a unique way. And so, in being together in the life of the church, 
we need one another and each other's different gifts. For each of us as individuals, as human beings, we need to be connected to one another. We need to be in community for our own wholeness and well-being. MHA strives to bring people together, particularly those who feel most isolated in our communities. Not just the people who are the same, but celebrating differences and enjoying one another's different gifts. And one way of achieving this is bringing generations together. Whilst there are differences across the generations, whether we are young, old or somewhere in between, we each share the core need to feel valued and recognized. In our reading, Paul implores us to recognize our gifts and use them. In the film we saw, the MHA communities is bringing together people of different ages and backgrounds. We also saw how young and old learned from one another, each using their different gifts and the richness of the experience for all involved. It's not that we can't survive without one another. We can and people do. But for some, the waiting in hope for a knock on the door or a phone to ring can become lonely and isolated and holding out for others the faithfulness of that Jesus spoke of. We will be aware of those in our own community who feel those things but there will be others whose names we do not know. When our churches were closed, many of us experienced isolation for ourselves. When community groups closed and the care homes closed to visitors, we learned the negative impact uh, that loneliness and isolation had on people's mental and physical health. Not all our churches are equipped and resourced to do all the things that we want to do. However, through MHA and your support, these there are so many things that can be done. Young and old are being brought together, enhancing the lives of all involved, reducing social isolation and loneliness, but also bringing fullness and joy. In one care home, local school, school children came and created a memory box for the residents. They made so many different boxes as well as filling the boxes with things they thought the residents would like. They also decorated them with messages such as love and peace or you are amazing. Such interactions benefits all involved. All over MHJ, Generations are coming together, whether it is to garden or to dance, play games or learn a skill. At the same time, negative stereotypes and ageism are combated. There is increased feeling in purpose as individuals younger and older, serve as teacher, mentor, 
or even grandparent, grandchild to someone who may not otherwise have that tie. One wonders if Paul knew all the science behind what he was writing or how relevant it would be to our society 2000 years later. Research has shown that intergenerational activity builds confidence, self-worth and overall well-being to individual lives. Leaving out what it means to be the body of Christ involves all of us, each with our different and unique gifts, so that when we come together, we experience life as God intended it, together as one. We are one body made up of different parts and we are all mutually dependent on each other. In some ways, our reading today is very simple. We need each other. Of course we do. But just as Paul had to remind his readers of this simple truth, so do we today. This analogy of the body of different parts becomes an even more pressing and urgent concern as we recognize the lack of support that exists for those in later life. We have all seen stories relating to the crisis of the social care and the lack of carers which makes this wonderful vision of this mutual dependency on each other an unmet reality lived out in the society. MHA continues to be the leading voice in campaigning for families in social care. You too can add your voice to be involved. As a church, we are called to speak up for those being too heavily dependent on. For society to work, we rely on the essential workers. Yet, these essential workers are often unseen and poorly paid. MHA believes strongly that carers should be seen, valued and rewarded for the vital work they do. This year, MHA's 80th anniversary. For 80 years from when the Methodist minister, Reverend Walter Hall, set out a vision to support older people and the Methodist Conference adopted that vision. MHA has a continued to support older people in communities like the one we saw in the video, as well as retirement living schemes and care homes. Today, MHA supports more than 18,500 older people across the UK thanks to the commitment and dedication of its 7,500 employees and 4,000 volunteers. Thank God that the Methodist Conference didn't say to Walter, I don't need you. Or Walter Hall said to the church, I don't need you. Because look what happens when we are working as one body. Look what can be achieved. Paul reminds us that nothing of worth has ever been accomplished 
without the support of many people with their many different gifts and talents, which is how the fruitful work of MHA has continued for the past 80 years, supporting some of the most excluded and vulnerable people in the society. Churches continue supporting the work today and particularly in bringing communities of different generations together. If you are able, you too are invited to volunteer, donate money, pray and add your voice and support to MHA as they continue to campaign on behalf of the social care sector, the workforce and all those in later life. We are one body made up of different parts and we are all mutually dependent on each other. May we each be given the confidence to know the part that we have within the body of Christ. May we open to receive from each other the things that God has for each of us. So that all the people of all the ages can find connection, purpose, learning and well-being. Amen.
lovely to see you in person. It's Thank so long, it seems, since we've been able to meet together. So that's really good. And today we're having an extra special Open Pages because we're thinking about the work of MHA and we thought, who better to talk to about that because you work for MHA than yourself. So, so that's great that you could come and be with us. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps let's kick off with you just saying a little bit about yourself and perhaps how you came to be working for MHA. Oh, yes. Um, working in care sector mm -hmm. since, um, I would say, 2004. Mm -hmm. Worked in different organizations and um, I was working as a register manager actually, mm -hmm. but looking was looking for really a good another opportunity, mm -hmm. and I come across through the opportunity. And after completing all the required procedure, I was selected. And same way, then mm -hmm. since last February, I'm working for MHA in Harrow. Harrow. Yeah. And what, what do you actually do? What does your job involve? Yes, working as a register manager means mm -hmm. uh, in charge and managing mm -hmm. the home. Mm -hmm. My home is a 30 bedded home mm -hmm. and over 50 staff are managing and mm -hmm. it is a residential home. Mm -hmm. Throughout the day, what residents are doing what staff are doing, that we are managing, their well-being, their mm -hmm. activities, their medical, uh, how they are fit and what their medical needs are. Mm. And uh, all those stuff mm. we are managing throughout the day, supporting, helping mm. to yeah. elderly in that. Yeah. As MHA is believing new life in li later life well mm. new life in later life that's yeah. a that's a thought for me as well as everybody else really yeah. yeah um so it must be it must be quite a complex job and quite time consuming is it it or? is actually demanding 24 hours job yes it is not nine to five job at all no uh, but enjoying yeah you, you, I, I, can I let on that just a few minutes ago you were telling me you were in work at four o'clock this morning and uh, it just shows that actually it's long hours and time commitments at strange hours as well. Yes, it is actually, but um, we know nature of job mm -hmm. and um, at the same time it is our compassion mm -hmm. and that is the way we dedicated ourselves to the sector. Mm -hmm. It is if we were thinking that nine to five jobs, then there are so many jobs are available. Mm. In, but this was the passion for me as well, to work for right. people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Methodist Church does a lot of talking about um, our calling. Um, and would you say this is your calling? 
to yes. work with yes, the elderly. Actually, yeah. Yes, actually. Uh, yes. Grown up in a Christian environment, mm. and uh, I studied well in mm. medical field too. Mm -hmm. So since my childhood, that was my passion mm. to serve people. And uh, in Methodist mission, I grew up. Mm -hmm. yeah, from my childhood till I came to UK, I was we were very connected with mm -hmm. Methodist mm -hmm. mission, hospital, and services too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was my passion it's since passion. my childhood to serve yeah. people. Yeah, so it's an interesting phrase, isn't it? Can we call our calling our passion, or our passion our calling? Really, because actually, let's be honest, for most of us, what is our passion? Is, is very often what we are called to do exactly. uh, because we do it with enthusiasm and with God's good grace. It's um, very, very there. Um, is there anything that you'd say was distinctive about MHA? Not necessarily better, because I think but is a bad word on this one, but, exactly. but distinctive, something that, that's kind of like the brand mark, if you like, of MHA. Would you say there was something particular? Yes, I would definitely say MHA, as everyone knows, or if somebody doesn't know that, MHA is the largest charity organization mm. in care in the UK. I have worked in several places. Mm. Every place has their different mm -hmm. goods better, right? But with MHA, they have their own chaplain. Yeah. in the service. Mm -hmm. So that is really great. Chaplain is supporting mm. all the time, regardless of the mm. people's belief that support mm. what they require. Mm. And also, most positive, another thing to maintain well-being with residents with dementia is our award-winning mu music therapy. Right. So that music is therapy. really amazing. Yeah. That that is literally distinguished, I would say, yeah. in MHA. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, the way well-being has been maintained and staff even enjoying. Mm. And uh, it's not work pressure. They are working as a home, as a family, mm. as a team. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting you should say that. Um, a few years ago, when I was privileged to attend Methodist Conference, I went to a seminar on dementia that, that MHA were putting on, um, and it still struck me that the whole thing, and they talked about music, and music being mm -hmm. the very last of your senses to go yes. when you have dementia. Yes. And so you can actually reach people in a way that you can't in any other way when their dementia is quite severe. Um, and that's, that is quite amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, music therapy is, is a very powerful tool that, that um, I think we underuse yes. in, in all walks of life, really. Yeah, also I would say MH is encouraging lots of activities. Mm. Uh, only asking staff to do activities that is different, but they are physically putting the effort mm. to each home, like providing the brochures, some mm. equipment, some information mm -hmm. that what you can do and... Um, Last year, I have received uh, dementia sensory cat, mm. and this year, um, a cat, cat, meow, yeah, cat. It's meow, okay. yeah, fantastic. Just checking, I've got it right, yeah, yeah. And this okay. year, I'm looking forward to get the dog. Oh wow! So that is the therapy which yeah. residents are enjoying a lot. Yeah, yeah, that is, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. a lot of primary schools are now getting therapy dogs. It seems yes. to be the thing. I'd quite like a therapy dog of my own, really. But yeah, yeah, fantastic, good. I mean, that sounds like they're all really quality yes. things that just give people something of a reminder of home and of life and, and things and help them in so many, many different ways. Now, Omi, you, you, you took up this job um, and when you started, then a little thing called a pandemic came upon us. And I know it was just at the point where you started your new job. Um, how was that for you? Obviously, it was challenging, mm, mm. but with great support mm. of the entire team, mm. we've been through well, very well. Mm. And how, how was the home affected? Yeah, home was affected initially. Mm. Uh, everyone was panic, stressed, 
yeah. even we were not aware what to do, how COVID-19 will mm -hmm. react, how COVID-19 can be dealt with. Mm -hmm. But uh, eventually with this support full of guidance, information mm -hmm. and uh, ongoing all the support from MHA mm -hmm. and diet team, including NHS, mm -hmm. that uh, we became settled. Mm -hmm. Yes, we received few loved ones, but mm -hmm. at the same time, home is became home became settled. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, and I guess then in lockdown, obviously all your all your residents needed extra care in a very different yes. way because they couldn't see loved ones. No. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we uh, start doing the Skype call, Zoom mm -hmm. call, WhatsApp call. And mm. uh, thereafter, it was the screen visits, like mm. visitors are coming to the windows and residents yeah. are sitting in their room or yeah. in conservatory yeah. or with the glass partition. We made the yeah. arrangement mm. that uh, they were able to visit yeah. each. Quite quickly, uh, really. Quite quickly, yeah. yes. Because that was obviously a worry for so many people, particularly with with um, dementia or any sort of aging yes. illnesses like that. Mm. Yeah, that's... Um, do you... We hear lots of... I mean, in a sense, you've tell, told a few stories of joy in this, but do you kind of... We're all, we're all hearing gloomy stories, and yes, in time to come, there will be inquiries as to how care homes were dealt with or not. But I think, actually, sometimes stories of joy... Um, in the workplace, particularly there. Have you got any stories of, of, of joyful things? Yes, I would say, first of all, that we began, we settled mm -hmm. from COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Quite a few residents was affected and was COVID-19 positive, mm -hmm. but uh, they got cure from COVID-19. 100 plus residents were cured yeah. and they are still with us. That is and good. I that have is excellent news. 400 plus residents in yeah. David's house. Yeah. So that is a joy for us that, mm, uh, that still is we support. Yeah. Many has lost their loved ones, but still we are having our residents with us. Mm, that is that most is good. joy. That is, that is good joy. That is good indeed. Um, as a church, uh, we, as you know, we, we support lots of different organisations within Methodism um, and as, as we're putting this together, it's MHA Sunday um, and um, is there anything that you think we as a church could particularly pray for? Well, thank you very much, John. Actually, during Christmas time and throughout the time, we got the support from church, especially I have received quite a few messages from church family mm -hmm. and yourself, Margaret, too, that you are praying, supporting, mm -hmm. that is good. At the same time, Christmas time, the way you send us the carols, ah, it, yes. was, it was really good. great help. Good. It was not once, quite a few times mm -hmm. we played and resident has really thoroughly enjoyed because mm. I can see this is my church singing mm. for you. Mm. So it was really great help. Well, and maybe, maybe this Christmas we can come along and sing yes, in person. Yes, looking forward. We really could do looking that. forward. Yes, that would but be good. But when you are saying what type of support or help, mm. I would say yes, prayers mm. will be a great support. Mm. At the same time, uh, there are requires lots of volunteers when mm. home opens, if anyone is willingly to come mm -hmm. as a volunteer or just a visitor to see a residence to, to mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Even we are having so many garden parties, coffee mornings. So in that, on that occasion, mm -hmm. if anyone would like to help, and obviously financial help is always yeah. supportive as a yeah. charity. Yeah. Like when we are doing the fundraising mm -hmm. or those type mm -hmm. of so wherever yeah. church family or church feels, Good. I'm happy that... Good, yes. <laughs> yes, and, and um, we are, as part of this Sunday, 
uh, doing a collection and people will be able to donate on the website on our church yes. website so yes. we're, we're collecting that and that'll be sent off to MHA when we've got that in which is is really good I mean I think I think we we rejoice with you in the work that you do Thank I think you. as a church we affirm you and I know sometimes people feel that their their ministries if you like the work they're doing is is not always affirmed when it's 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 not as a minister or in, in, in a church context but actually your work is so important to so many people it's it's life-changing really and that positive positive way that you you obviously deal with that is okay, it's you. really really important so thank you Ermi thank you for sharing with us thank you John and um, we wish you all the best for the future Thank you, John, and I wish all the best and all the best wishes from mm -hmm. MHA to the church family. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We come to our prayers for MHA and the world. Let us pray. Lord, we give thanks for 80 years of MHA and the continuing work and love in support of older people in homes and in the wider community. We thank you for privileged moments, friendships being formed, generations learned from one another, community being created, special moments of recognition through worship and music for those living with dementia. Thank you that you remember. We pray for carers, both employees and volunteers, and those who care for loved ones at home, for those who make sacrifices every day for others. In their caring, may they find hidden treasures of joy, connection and hope. Bless them through strength and patience. We pray for young and old and everyone in between, particularly from those for those suffering from mental or physical pain, those waiting for hospital appointments and results, those who feel lonely and isolated and those who feel anxious. Bring your peace and love to these people and these situations and we name those we know personally in need at this time. Bring your healing Lord. Bless your church that we may continue your work as we seek to follow you. Guide us in your ways and to the people that you call us to serve. May we discern and use the gifts that you have for us. We offer our prayers in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen.
Thank you for joining us in this act of worship. And thank you especially to those who've been involved today in sharing with us. And now a blessing. May we go from here into this new week with the assurance of God's presence with us and all those we meet. May we discover our gifts and use them for his service. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be yours and with all those whom you love this day and every day. Amen.